area up there. Dan Tenninger and his cousin happened to be driving the same road. You could see skid marks going right off the edge of the cliff. There's a car over the bank. Like a low one, I'm going down. Looked like someone smoldering fire down there. You couldn't see nothing. But I didn't want to be a spectator and just watch it burn from the top of the cliff. Police fire and ambulance, do you have an emergency? Yes, I do. Um, there's a car went off a cliff here, up on Highway 58, up on the pass. I just stopped. It's on fire. Highway 58, do you know what mile post you're at? I'm, I'm not sure what mile... The cellular call initially came in to the Eugene EMS Center, 55 miles away. Okay. Oh, man, those people are dead. Hang in there, Darcy. Well, I had to cut her out of her seat belt. You don't want to move a person with a back injury, but I can feel the heat of the flames on, on my back. I didn't know if the gas tank was going to explode, but I knew she had at least a half a tank of gas. It's okay. i got to get you up. Fortunately, her feet were not tangled up in anything. I was able to utilize the seat and keeping her her body as rigid as possible, pull her out as straight as I can. The rocks were the size of Volkswagens. We were slipping and falling. A tire exploded. Boom! We didn't know what it was. We jumped a little bit. Oak Ridge Fire and Ambulance Units were immediately dispatched, but they were more than 20 minutes away. And what kind of vehicle? Car? Okay, they, they got the guy out. Don't move him! Don't move him, Dad! got the guy out? Who's with him? Uh, uh, my buddy. He, uh, he's dragging the guy. Don't move him! He could have a broken leg or, or something in his neck or back! Do you know, do you know if the person is conscious or breathing? I can't tell. Um, let me find out. Is he okay? Is he alive? Dan! It's a girl. Patient is a female. Is she conscious? Yes, she's crying. We weren't, but maybe 15, 20 feet away, and the flames had just engulfed the vehicle. The whole left side of her body had taken a beating. And there was a lot of blood covering the left side of her face. She said, Dad, I'm not afraid to die. We just kind of held our hands together and prayed for her. Lord, give us strength to make She was more concerned about her baby than uh, she was for herself. Devin was up at the top of the hill. the baby wouldn't have survived the accident. The temperature had dropped to about 20 degrees. She was going into hypothermia. And there was bags of clothes that had fallen out of her car. So we broke open the bags of clothes, started packing her in these clothes, trying to make her as comfortable as we could. EMT Mark Leverton was one of the first medics on the scene. I looked down the hill and said, oh my God, you know, what are we going to do? I didn't think anybody could live through something like that. And I saw probably some of the worst conditions for rescue that you could have. We're going to need a lot of bodies for picking up and putting her in the stove. You had steep ground. You had slippery ground. It was going to be a brute force show. You're on the head. You stabilize the head. We need two people on shoulders, two people on hips, two people on legs. We're going to pick her up as a unit, put her in. Okay. She kept asking me, how far did I go down? I thought maybe they'd put her in shock. She actually knew how far she fell. So I didn't want to tell her, yeah, you just went three, four hundred feet over a cliff, you know, and you're all busted up. She had some obvious outward signs of cuts and scrapes and bruises, but along with those come internal injuries, which are the silent killers. Going to go to your right a little bit. There were three times up the hill where she got real quiet and real limp, and I thought she was gone. But every time she was a fighter, she came back. Two and a half hours after the crash, Darcy was finally pulled out of the ravine. I still had about a 75-mile drive into St. Charles Hospital in Bend. Your first instinct is to hurry. 
but I had to remember I still had my granddaughter with me, and I didn't want another accident to happen. It was probably the longest 75 miles that I could have driven. 20-year-old Darcy Criswell was transferred to an Airlife helicopter and taken to St. Charles Medical Center, where neurosurgeon Mark Belsa took over her care. Good to see you. She's been down a little while. She's a little bit cool, but she's moving on. She had a uh, fractured spine. She had a uh, fractured left elbow. She had a fractured foot, a bruised lung, a perforated lung. Look over here. She could have had a lot worse. She could have been thrown from the vehicle and died. Uh, Darcy could have been uh, killed by fire. She came uh, within a half an inch of being paralyzed in the waist down because of her spinal fracture. I didn't really realize the impact of the accident until I see my daughter laying in, I, uh, in ICU. I must have stayed there quite late, just waiting for her to go to sleep. A year has passed. I kind of believe that things happen for a purpose. It's like, what exactly am I supposed to be learning from this? I mean, was this really necessary? She'll never be able to be a floor nurse because of her back injury, the weakness in her arm. The requirements are you, you have to lift, I think, 50 pounds to be able to lift that. She's just now getting to the point where she can lift her daughter. But she's very determined. She's known since she was eight years old that she was going to go to college. I am glad that I wore my seatbelt, and I'm really thankful that there were people there to help me. There was a state trooper down there. He actually let me wear his hat for a while. <laughs> he said I earned it. I was sore for days, but it's always good to have a safe. And this is one that I put in my top five. My dad, to me, was a hero. I think as kids and teenagers, people don't um, appreciate their parents. They just kind of forget what all their parents do for them. And it, um, it made me really stop and think. Next, Teresa let out a yell right from the gut. At that point, there was no denying it, the baby was coming. <laughs> 